episode is brought by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new and much requested episode of Paleo Myths. In the last episode, we explored whether Taurosaurus was a valid, distinct taxon or simply a more mature Triceratops. Let's step away from the maze of ontogeny and head to something easier to determine dinosaur behavior. The problem with you is you're completely delusional. One super common trope shown time and time again is the pack hunting raptor, dromaeosaurids working in a coordinated effort to bring down prey, sometimes orders of magnitude larger than them. For the purposes of this video, I'm narrowing my scope to dromaeosaurids, nicknamed raptors only. Other theropods do show potential evidence of pack or family behavior, but we're dealing with a very diverse clade of creatures. Their behaviors may be as widely varied as they were. Heck, even speculating an entire family may be too big a scope, considering how different species within the same genus live today. Despite the limitations, it is most commonly shown with dromaeosaurids, so they're who I'll be dealing with today. So, did these groundhogs hunt in coordinated packs? Let's dig this up. Okay, before we really get started, I must clarify. Raptor can have a range of meanings. Stemming from Latin for plunderer or Caesar, it's been primarily used to describe modern birds of prey. For over a hundred years of paleontology, Many theropods from several lineages have been given the title in their generic names. Synraptor from Metriacanthosauridae, Gigantoraptor, the Canignated, and Oviraptor, the Oviraptorid, are each examples of this. For the purposes of this video, I'll be using the term solely to refer to the Dromaeosaurids, rather than saying that a thousand times as many family members use Raptor in the name, Velociraptor being an obvious example. Getting on to the myth, we see pack hunting in almost every documentary with these predators. The examples are endless. Walking with dinosaurs, when dinosaurs owned America, chased by dinosaurs, Jurassic Fight Club, Dinosaur Revolution, life on our planet, and yes, prehistoric planet, no matter how much its fans want to doubt. It's not true. That's impossible. But where does this idea come from? Why are coordinated planned attacks so pervasive in our paleo media? I can't say for sure if this was the exact start of the hypothesis, but it has its origins with John Ostrom in 1969, when the famed paleontologist named and described Deinonychus anteropus, a lightly built, fleet-footed theropod dinosaur with blade-like teeth, long arms tipped in hooked claws, a stiff counterbalancing tail, and a sickle claw on the second toe. In addition to launching the dinosaur renaissance and upending decades of entrenched bad takes, Ostrom discovered five specimens of Deinonychus lying alongside the much larger plant eater Tenontosaurus in the cloverleaf formation of Montana, representing fauna from the early Cretaceous about 110 million years ago. Another occurrence of the two were later found in Oklahoma's Antlers Formation. Here in the 1990s, a group of six Tenontosaurus of varying ages was found alongside a single Deinonychus. Well, well, well. How the turntables... Shed teeth were discovered alongside one plant eater's bones. Of course, they couldn't be from the dead predator. The conclusion drawn from these discoveries being that the smaller, about 150 pound, 3.4 meter carnivores worked as a team to bring down the one ton ornithopod, transforming dinosaur depictions forever. Tenontosaurus from this point will always be a Deinonychus punching bag, all the while Alcocantosaurus and Sauropelta sit in the corner waiting for someone to notice them. Other family members, such as Velociraptor, will constantly be presented as intelligent pack hunters too. This myth of pack hunting is often coupled with other pop culture staples, including profound intelligence and disemboweling with that dreaded terrible claw, but those are subjects for another day, if I didn't thoroughly debunk that already in my review on the truth about killer dinosaurs. So John Ostrom was right about many things and changed the world's understanding of dinosaurs forever. But was he right about this? Were dromaeosaurids like Deinonychus pack hunters? If so, would this apply to other raptors? What does the evidence say? 
Throughout my time online, I've continuously disputed the portrayal of dromaeosaurids and many other theropod dinosaurs as gang killers, but is there any evidence in support of this idea? Well, surprisingly enough, it may not be as open and shut a case as maybe, say, Megalodon still being alive. <laughs> oh my god, my insides are on fire! <laughs> One line of evidence I found comes from a 1995 paper by doctors Maxwell and Ostrom in which they lay out the relationship between the aforementioned Deinonychus and Tenontosaurus. Those two will be coming up a lot in this video. I mentioned two famous occurrences in the Cloverly and Antlers formation, but it goes further than these two. Tenontosaurus, being the most common Cloverly dinosaur, was uncovered at 58 out of 103 sites excavated by Yale crews. Of those 58 Tenontosaurus finds, 14 were associated with or near Deinonychus remains. Deinonychus material not associated with Tenontosaurus only occurred at six localities, so much more often than not for the predators, we find them alongside their prey. Shed teeth would be found on the remains of the ornithopod as well as tooth puncture marks on the bone. This strong association in the fossil record between the two indicates a clear predator-prey relationship. How would Deinonychus be able to bring down Tenontosaurus, that's many times its own size, if not by working as a team? Together! 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 Not to meme on another extinct carnivore, but scavenging was always an option. Maybe that's what happened. If perhaps the giant contemporary Acrocanthosaurus had already brought down one of these prey items, or if they just died of natural causes, and Deinonychus happened to arrive for cleanup, then perhaps that could explain their association, but I have yet to hear of a single Tenontosaurus specimen with evidence of both an Acro attack and a raptor feasting, so maybe this is a little far-fetched. Also, how would that explain the raptors dying on the scene? Well, one 2007 paper by Brian Roach and Daniel Brinkman tries to explain it through looking at phylogenetics, the evolutionary relationships between organisms, and by re-evaluating previous fossil finds that supposedly argued for a more mammal-like pack hunting behavior. And first thing to note, notice how I just referred to pack hunting as mammal-like. If you think of the teamwork typically associated with dromaeosaurids, which modern animals come to mind? Of course, we've got canids such as wolves, African wild dogs, doles, and sometimes coyotes and jackals. Then we have lions, hyenas, cetaceans, etc, etc, etc. This list is not exhaustive, so please don't come at me in the comments saying I missed examples. Although these groups of animals may have different names, you get the point. Groups of individuals that show social behaviors, live together, and work together, whether in survival, hunting, or child rearing. All of these aforementioned animals are mammals. Deinonychus is a reptile. Or we call it a diapsid or sauropsid or whatever if we shouldn't keep using reptile. Oh, and of course, there are the eusocial insects, which are so far removed evolutionarily speaking, so that's besides the point. Dromaeosaurids are not mammals. When we look at modern reptiles as a whole, it's very slim pickings for anything close to what the puppies are capable of. Most birds, which are the only dinosaurs we have today, may congregate, but still typically forage alone or in a mating pair. If they are hunting or foraging as a group, they're still doing it individually, just congregating at the same area. Same goes for those large birds of prey. The most coordination we get out of the modern, actual raptors may be from the Harris hawk that I've already heard you typing about in the comments. In groups of up to six birds I've read, they'll work together to search for prey. Once food is found, one member can flush it out while the others surround it and work to bring it down. Awesome, but this is by far the exception and not the rule. The vast majority of dinosaurs today don't do this. Crocodilians have been observed rounding schools of fish together, along with creating coordinated ambushes. They'll usually hunt solitarily or mob prey, like, say, Komodo dragons. The world's largest extant lizard isn't a dinosaur like birds or even an archosaur like crocodiles, but still a reptile or sauropsid or whatever. You may see several lizards bringing down the same large kill, then feasting on its flesh. 
This may give the look of pack behavior, though they exhibit what would be called mobbing. Instead of cooperating as a team, they're each simply looking out for number one, opportunistically showing up around a prey item, bringing down the same target at the same time, perhaps drawn together by the smell of blood. Once the buffalo is down, all bets are off. To the victor goes the spoils. The largest dragon fills first while everyone else patiently waits their turn. Those who step out of line get clapped, then cannibalized by the bigger killers. If I ever find one of these lying around again, I swear to fucking God, I will stop being so polite. Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. This may have been the case with Deinonychus, being more likely in terms of reptile behavior. The main point here being that cooperative, coordinated hunting should not be our default for this lineage of the family tree. A solitary lifestyle should be the default for most predators, but diapsids especially. On the rare occasion when they're not hunting alone, that would more likely than not indicate a loose mob of opportunistic individuals drawn together. So a high burden of proof is needed on the side of pack hunting, not the other way around. Okay, okay, that's a lot of circumstantial evidence. Behaviors don't usually preserve, but we can find some clues to help us piece together how they may have behaved. So is there anything to back up all this conjecture looking at the closest living relatives, or does the hard evidence actually point to a social life? Well, one line of evidence from the 2007 paper studies the age of Deinonychus present at the Tenontosaurus kill sites. What the authors found was that these raptors were not fully grown, still being sub-adults. Perhaps these were the smaller Komodo dragons, if you will. To further solidify this point, missing body parts are consistent with being eaten by other members of their own species rather than being crushed by the larger herbivore. Another point against pack hunting came not so long ago in 2020 when a paper led by Dr. Joseph Fredrickson shed some light on the debate. Fredrickson and colleagues evaluated the stable carbon isotopes of Deinonychus teeth, small and large. Small being from younger individuals, and large from the older ones, of course. Chemically, you really are what you eat, so a scientist can tell a creature's diet by studying the chemical composition of fossils. If they shared the same diet, as you would expect in a pack, then you would see similar isotopic levels. If they ate differently, then you would see different isotopic levels. Well, what Fredrickson found were much greater levels of the carbon-13 isotope in teeth under 4.5 millimeters tall, and much reduced levels in adult teeth of 9 millimeters. Now we can say that adult and juvenile Deinonychus were not eating the same foods. Younglings probably chased small insects and small vertebrates, while the more grown animals were eating other dinosaurs like Zephyrosaurus, Aquilops, and the aforementioned Tenontosaurus, of course. So no, family members were not sharing their kills with each other. Unfortunately for us, we can't go back in time to record raptors in the act, so evidence like this is the best we can do. But wouldn't it be cool if we could get a snapshot of dinosaurs hunting? If you agree, then let me introduce you to the fighting dinosaur specimen, discovered in the Mongolian Jadukta Formation in 1971. Well, it's a very popular find, so you're probably already acquainted. But now we can finally step away from Deinonychus to give some other Dromaeosaurids a spotlight. Here comes the legendary Velociraptor, locked in combat with the pig-sized, hard-beaked Protoceratops, buried together in the sands of time. I think you and I are destined to do this forever. You'll be in a better chill forever. What you may immediately notice is how there's only one Velociraptor rather than a swarm on top of the Ceratopsian. You can easily file this as a solo hunt, right? Well, some elements of the Protoceratops have been displaced, like the right forelimb that's been ripped out and reversed. Perhaps someone was attempting to scavenge the carcass, stealing the raptor's hard work. Perhaps this was the member of the raptor's pack finishing the job. What is that? Back up. Eh, probably not. Both Drs. Kenneth Carpenter in 1998 and Barsbold in 2016 drew the conclusion that Protoceratops was likely scavenged after the fact, not ripped apart in battle by group mates or anything. So this all happened post-mortem. The next earth-shattering find in this conversation comes from Utah. 
paleontologists have discovered a massive 9-ton block with two iguanodonts and, oh yeah, a Shrek load of Utah raptors, a giant half-ton, 7-meter early relative of the smaller raptors we've looked at. So far, we know the block has preserved at least one adult, 10 juveniles, and 3 babies, though more are expected to be uncovered. Could all of these groundhogs of death have been hunting together as one starving, depressed, totalitarian collective? Yeah, not really. It seems as if the predators each got stuck in quicksand, so we're looking at an early Cretaceous predator trap. Instead of each member getting stuck at the same time, they were all most likely attracted to the sounds of struggling prey or the smell of death. Then one by one, they waltz in expecting an easy meal, but getting stuck themselves. Again, being solitary should be our default, so this is a more likely scenario than this being a whole pack that came together at once and got killed. But we may have to wait on drawing more conclusions. I'm hoping to see more publications on the Mega Block in the future. One last line of evidence I'll bring up are dromaeosaurid trackways found in the Shandong province of eastern China. Tracks from some type of raptor dinosaur showed six individuals moving in the same direction at the same time. This could be evidence in favor of pack hunting, a pack moving along together. But again, we can't jump to any conclusions. You would find similar tracks if six individuals were moving towards the same target, like a body of water, a carcass, or some fighting out in the distance already in progress. It's impossible to tell either way. Now with all the facts in mind, let's try to make sense of what's going on and close out this paleo myth. Throughout the animal kingdom, we see many different forms of sociality. Some only hook up and then leave. Others may be gregarious, congregating together but without meaningful interactions. Others may form varying degrees of groups. You social species form societies where everyone is born into a predetermined role. Then there's everything in between. When studying extinct animals such as the dromaeosaurid family of dinosaurs, it's usually impossible to tell from direct evidence where they fit in this picture. Forget whole families, even members of the same family, heck even within the same genus, can live vastly different lives. The best we can do is make logical, evidence-based inferences while acknowledging how, in most cases, we will never get a complete picture. So, when it comes to cases like the famous raptor dinosaurs, we may get hints of gang coordination, but we can't know for sure. Considering how this is rare in their living analogs, and how our default should be a more solitary lifestyle, there is a high burden of proof that, quite frankly, I'm not convinced of yet. Some evidence points in this direction, though not enough, and certainly not enough that would discredit other lines of thought, such as mobbing, at least in my opinion. So while not an open and shut case, I say we take this whole myth back to formula. Back to formula. I don't hate the paleo myth. I can see why John Ostrom would propose that hypothesis as a possible scenario for his discoveries. That's the lovely thing about science though, ideas are tested, either being supported or disputed by the evidence. While a cool idea, it isn't supported well enough in my opinion to show up in documentary after documentary, movie after movie, game after game. It's become such a pervasive, inescapable portrayal of raptors, but ultimately falls short. That's just me though, what do you guys think? Be sure to drop a comment down below. And remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like, subscribe, and to check out my social media. See you next time.